So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again. We're going to talk about Manchester United and how they're an absolute shambles right now. Um, from top to bottom, ownership down, um, all the way down to a big percentage of their fan base. Uh, make sure you are making the like button fly up. Caress it slowly. Just press it. It takes less than a second. Just press the like button. Uh, big up to everybody who is subscribed. This channel is very close to 20k. So if you could uh, get it up to 20k, that'd be great. Uh, we'll have a watch along on this channel on Thursday. Uh, my Saudi team are playing. Riyad Mahrez FC, Firmino FC. Uh, they are back again on Thursday. Henry Wright's going to join me as well. Uh, but until then, it will just be some uploads for now. Um, tonight, I'm on with Henry Wright on his channel. Uh, quarter to six UK time. Straight after that, live watch along on my main channel for the Crystal Palace Arsenal game, uh, where after we've seen a lot of poor results this weekend from some of the bigger teams and some poor performers, including United, who we're going to talk about, Arsenal have to get a win. Uh, but yes, less than uh, less than 350 away from 20k. So if you could sub, that'd be great. Get your comments and super chats in down below as well. Do always appreciate that. Uh, but let's talk about Man United. Um, they're, they're a mess. For nine months straight, we've had um, all of the world being privy to the takeover talk. <laughs> okay, good one. Well done. Uh, that hasn't happened, does it? And I don't believe the Glazers even want to sell it. I just think that they're they're just taking the mick. Yeah, they're just trying to just trying to take the mick out of everybody. You know, and the longer it goes on, the more chance of them keeping the club there is. And let's be real. I know it's a massive, massive amount of money we're talking about in terms of the, the fee to buy the club, the money it would take. But surely it don't take nine months. I mean, come on, nine months. They don't want to sell it. And I've said this for a very long time. And the thing is, when you actually look at the manager they've got in there now, he, he, did, a, he did all right last season. He got to two finals, um, got to a quarter final of the Europa League until David De Gea and Harry Maguire happened and um, finished third in the league. So on paper, you could go, oh, well, they won a trophy. That's the aim of the game. Because if you don't win one, you've lost. Sorry to break it to everybody. But you either win or you lose. And winning is defined by holding a trophy. Just saying. Um, they did that. They lost another final. They got to a quarters and they finished third. Okay, not a bad first season. But it's Man United. You have to do better. So he starts this season dropping Harry Maguire as the captain, trying to flog him while sitting in every single press conference and every single interview praising him, which makes no sense to me. You want him gone, but you're going to praise him to the high heavens. No wonder he don't want to leave, by the way, because every time you speak, Ten Hag, you're sitting there praising him, making out he's great. Oh, no, he's a fantastic pro, and I really hope he fights for his spot, and he's got a chance here, and this and that. But then you're grand concerned that you can't get rid of him. Then today, I see a story coming out that Eric Ten Hag wants to keep Lindelof and he doesn't want to go to Wren because Ten Hag wants to keep him. He wants to stay at United. OK, let me just break this down in simple terms, right? Man United are not very good. Let's just be real with it. They're not very good. Yeah, and that's not just basing it off of the last two games. That is basing it off of the last 20 games. And I know they won the cup. Take the cup out of the equation. They were poor for the rest of that. As soon as they won that cup, the rest of that season, they were shocking at times. Shocking. You turn up in a cup final against your, your rivals who are on for a treble. And after eight seconds, you can see the goal. Varane ducking out the way like a baby. Bro, you've played in some of the biggest games in world football. One of the biggest honours in world football and you're ducking. you got Varane coming out moaning about the amount of games being played. You've got Mason Mount, his brother, coming out moaning about the criticism after one. Like, what is going on at that football club? you got the roof leaking. The toilets are overstreaming with urine. You've got Varane coming out crying about the amount of games. You've got the manager coming out praising every single player in the squad, refuses to cuss any of them, refuses to belittle any of them in public. The yeah, evidence behind closed doors is trying to get rid of them. If you're trying to get rid of them that badly, mate, you try them in the reserves. I've said this before on here. Jose Mourinho put Victor Valdez and Bastian Schweinsteiger in the reserves. It can be done. But, again... Since the manager's got here, he's got rid of Ronaldo. He's got rid of um, quite a lot of big name players. David De Gea is another one. You know, got a lot off the wage bill, nearly two million quid a week off the wage bill. Playing the likes of Garnacho, let's be real here. I don't get the hype. 
I genuinely do not get the hype around Garnacho. I don't see anything he excels at. Don't see it. He's not got a great first touch. He's not got great finishing. He's not got great dribbling. He hasn't got any physicality. And he just runs in straight lines. But because he's got a funky barnet and he can run quick, yeah, Man United fans on mass love him. He's not a very good footballer. Then you go on to the flip side of that and you've got Anthony. He ain't got a right foot. I've never seen a more one-footed player in my life. And I've seen Ian Robin play football. <laughs> Come on. He, he is the most one-footed player I've ever seen. It's embarrassing. Then you've got the PR merchant up front who shouldn't be playing up front because we know he's not very good up front. So it's a bit of a mess. And I look at it and I think, well, how do Man United get better here? Where do they go from here? You're playing Man United, Mason Mount, Bruno Fernandes and Casemiro in midfield as a trio. That is never going to work. I don't need coaching badges or 8 million quid a year to know that ain't working. That is never working. Wolves midfield plowed through you. Tottenham's midfield plowed through you. We're not talking about two great teams here. We're talking about one team that could be relegated this season because they're not very good. And another team that ain't won a trophy for 15 years. And they're just a weird fan base. Not all of them, but a lot of them. They're just happy to see nice football rather than actually demanding trophies. But it is what it is. That's a whole nother stream or a whole nother video. But I look at it and I think, where do United go from here? How do United become great again? And the only way United become great again, a couple, re- couple of ways. Number one, the ownership needs to do one. The only way the ownership does one is if people stop paying money to them. I don't like you, but here's a thousand pounds to renew my season ticket. I don't like you, but I'm going to buy a scarf in the club shop. I don't like you, but I'm going to buy a hot dog in the ground. I don't like you, but I'll buy the program as well. I don't like you, but I'll take pictures in the stadium and post it all over my socials that I'm at the game. But I don't like you, but I'm giving you all this money. So that's got to stop. Number two, you need a you need a shit house manager, a proper bad man. Diego Simeone is perfect for any club trying to rise again. Yeah, I sat and watched that game against Betis last night, bored out of my box watching it. But you know what? He got a draw away to Betis. They didn't have a single shot on target, Real Betis, at home. Not a single shot on target at home. Because you know why? Real Betis are half decent. They have been since Pellegrini got there. So he went, we ain't going to come here and play expansive football against this lot. We'll just take a draw. And between them, they had one shot on target. I love that style of football. I grew up on George Graham. Stink your way to titles. Stink your way to doing the best. Stink your way to trophies. Man United are not doing that with Ten Hag. I know he won one last season. Fair play to him. But you're not going to win the league with Ten Hag. And ultimately, Man United should be trying to win the league. And I just don't see how they do it with that ownership and that manager. Yeah, furthermore, the squad. Some of that squad are abysmal. Luke Shaw, sorry, I do not get it. There's some Man United fans out there that call him world class. World class at what? Because it definitely ain't football. You've got Varane, who looks like he's just come to Man United to just have a jolly up. Was Varane coming out moaning about the amount of games when he was at Real Madrid? No, he will not because he would have got told, shut up, mate. Yeah, instead, you can get away with it, United, because the culture of Man United football club is finished compared to what it used to be under Fergie. He wouldn't have come out under Fergie crying about the amount of games. He would have been he would have been put in the reserves for two weeks or sat on the bench for a month. Yeah, Man United are not the club that they used to be. And I'm listen, I'm an Arsenal fan. My club are no better. I'm just saying, yeah, this is a channel about other clubs and about other things. React. And I see the Lindelof story. I've seen Varane. I've seen, you know, Greenwood's story as well. Now it's, is he coming back? Isn't he coming back? Why don't you just nip it in the bud, pay him his money and let him leave? How about that? Man United just looks like a mess. It looks like a, a, a once great club that doesn't really know what it wants to be anymore. So they're just floating through the next couple of years with this egg as manager. Uh, you ain't doing nothing in terms of title charge with that manager. I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it. You've got the money, but you know when you're buying ex Ajax players and buying players that are not very good, I don't really see how you're going to get better and compete with Man United, uh, with Man City. Sorry, I just don't see it. Yeah, and I'll tell you now, I think he might get sacked this season because I've already seen enough since the the League Cup win to know this guy is not the guy. He just stands there like that on the touchline. I don't want a manager like my manager running up and down, landing planes and all of this. And 
and like micromanaging. You don't want a manager like that. But what you do want is a manager that, when it's going a little bit wrong, starts effing and blinding into him and saying, yo, do your job, mate, because I don't see that with Ten Hag. Yeah, and listen, that's not always the right way. When you're managing Man United, you have to be the main guy. And listen, he's got Casemiro in, he's got Varane in there, his players. He's got Sancho in, that's his player. He's got the striker in, that's his player, who ironically shares the same agent. Who knew? Uh, he's got a few other players in. Mason Mount's his player, the goalkeeper's his player. So he's got his players in, he's spent a lot of money. He has to deliver now, right? And I don't think he's good enough to get Man United into a title charge. Now, that's just my thoughts. Now, let me know your thoughts on Man United and why they're such a shambles. Because they are a shambles. They're an ex-great club. They're a massive, giant football club, institutional football club that have absolutely gone down the swanee. It's mad. Uh, but anyway, uh, leave a like on the video. Do subscribe. I'll be back again tomorrow. And uh, make sure you come and tune in on Thursday for the watch along for our athlete. My boys are balling out on Thursday. Get your comments and supers in down below. We're out of here, people. Adios, amigos. Ciao.